Hey everybody, welcome back to challengeyourself.blog. Today's episode, it's just a quick update. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to give a shout out to all my subscribers. We hit the thousand uh, subscriber mark uh, last weekend. I really appreciate all the support, so let's get started. Uh, take a moment after the video to hop on over to challengeyourself.blog. I'm adding some new content. There's a new page. It contains all kinds of uh, parts that I'm using in the video series. My HTML is still a little rusty, uh, so I it took me a little longer to set it up. I had to get the formatting correct because it kind of broke the page. Uh, so now that I've got that set up, I'm going to be adding in more uh, parts. So uh, stay tuned and you know keep uh, checking back periodically. The site is growing and expanding. I'm doing this across multiple video and social media platforms. Uh, you can see that on, on the blog page. If you'd like to support my work, uh, there's a new link for uh, Patreon. So uh, check that out. Uh, there's several different subscriber options. And also please click that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It gets the uh, channel uh, growing and you know I can develop more content. If you enjoyed what you've seen, uh, please click the like button and of course um, share the video. I uh, really appreciate that. So for today's update, I had to disassemble my robot arm. So please forgive uh, the still image that I'm opening up with. Uh, I didn't video it because uh, I thought it would work and it didn't. So, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, the fact that it didn't work as planned is okay. That's part of the learning process. Making mistakes is probably the best teacher. Uh, so if everything we did turned out exactly as planned, we'd never really know how to handle when something was outside of our control. I started off by cutting a half moon shape hole in the midsection of the strut arm and then I bolted uh, the stepper motor directly to the arm. Now there's enough clearance uh, for the stepper motor shaft uh, to protrude through and this was set up to drive a pulley system so I could lift the arm. When I made the belt uh, using the belt material that I had in the previous video, I glued it together and uh, ended up, it ended up breaking uh, due to excessive torque. Uh, at first I was a little frustrated but then I realized you know this is a really good thing because it had it broken after I'd you know assembled everything and it was running during you know the first trial run I could have caused you know more damage to the rest of the arm or you know burn up a motor or something so now I'm building a small gearbox and this is to generate more torque to lift the arm uh, it's still in the early stages of construction so uh, it'll be up and going pretty soon the rods won't be full length that's just you know I'm trying to get the arrangement uh, set up and I'll cut those off. Uh, I also wanted to bring up these little yellow spacers uh, in the video. Uh, I want to give out a, a shout out to my cousin Scott. Uh, this was kind of his idea, so I uh, wanted to make sure I you know, gave him a, you know, a shout out for this. Uh, he was working on a home project and we got to talking about uh, spacers um, and on his side he was using shrink wrap. Uh, so. I thought, hey, that might you know work really well for what I'm doing. So uh, here's a little you know segment on how I did that. So in multiple steps, you take you know uh, the first layer, uh, slide that on uh, to the piece that you're uh, you know, wanting to build up. Then you know slide a second layer on, slide a third layer on, and then I used a, a lighter to just kind of heat up uh, gently the. Uh, remainder of the material and uh, get it uh, firmed up and then I was able to cut off custom length uh, pieces uh, so that that was uh, one of the added uh, benefits of this I didn't have to go online and buy an assorted box and then find out that I was missing you know two of the size that I really needed this way I can kind of get through the the prototyping portion of, of this project and uh, you know, figure out how many parts I need in order to, to do the Mark III. I also wanted to mention these shaft collars that I talked about also in a previous episode. These are five millimeter ID. That I bought them from Rulan. They're, they have little inset screws. They do a great job holding uh, in place. So I'm really happy with my purchase and they do a really great job. Um, I'm sure I'll be ordering more. I have different uh, diameter shafts, so I'll be probably buying uh, more from them in the future. And they were pretty cost effective too. So that's all I have uh, for the moment on the robotics. I'll have another update uh, probably uh, early next week 
after I finish up the gearbox. Uh, so that'll uh, cover the robotic side. On the gaming side, I do have a video uh, from earlier this week that I'm kind of in the middle of editing. Uh, I recorded uh, Elite Dangerous. Uh, I was using VR uh, and uh, the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTUS X. Uh, I've had it for several years, so I'm sure they have uh, you know a newer version of that. But uh, it, it makes the game so much uh, easier to uh, fly in the VR uh, is mind blowing. It really adds an extra level, uh, to your experience playing the game. So stay tuned. I'm hopefully going to have that, uh, elite dangerous video posted on Saturday. So thanks again for stopping in at challenge yourself blog. Uh, appreciate all the support again. Thank you uh, to my over, uh, 1100 subscribers. Uh, so if you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and if anything, just share this video. It really, uh, you know, helps me out. I look forward to seeing everybody next time, and stay tuned. Another video is coming up soon.